how does the work that you're doing on documentary heritage preservation support uh, these sustainable development goals? Six reasons why I think it's really important and I'll be very fast. Firstly, traditional knowledge is still relevant. So um, I was in a, uh, at a conference in Changsha in China on local chronicles. Does anyone here know what local chronicles are? I'd never heard of them. Local reports of what's happened in an area and so they're almost like a yearbook of events that are sanctioned by the government so it's a clear understanding of what's happened in that particular place and, and how they've dealt with it. So it might be an earthquake, it could be anything that's happened in a region. And um, it's a huge department in China. There's 40,000 people work in the local Chronicles office. And they gave an example of how it's important. There's a, a, the um, scientist who won the Nobel Prize for Medicine um, back in 2015, I think it was, at UU2, actually found a new uh, cure for malaria, looking back through the local Chronicles and finding out that they'd used previously. And so this was an example of how traditional knowledge is still really relevant. The second point I, would I was thinking about was we must know where we come from to know where we are going. And I was at a conference in New Caledonia, which of course was involved a lot of people from the Pacific Islands as great navigators. And one of the master navigators had said, you've got to know where your island is before you can go go anywhere else. You've got to know where you've come from to know where you're going. And so there's a really big emphasis in that at that conference, the Sipava conference, on preserving oral traditions and indigenous knowledge. And um, the third point was history isn't objective because um, who writes history? People who have a vested interest in, in, in saying what it is. And this whole politics of memory and what is meant by history, we retain memory by documenting it and history is the construct we put on past events. So Winston Churchill said, history is written by the victors. And so we really need to be thinking about the politics of memory and the politics of history um, and we need to be very aware especially as archivists, uh, uh, about what and why we are selecting and preserving records. Today's stories are tomorrow's history. There was another story at the Sapava conference. This is the Southeast Asian audiovisual conference from Cambodia where they're using children to interview parents and grandparents about the times through Pol Pot. And this has got a double... Um, op uh, benefit of helping, the, it's cathartic for the people doing it, but it's also creating new ideas and new uh, information about what happened in that time. The fifth thing is local history brings communities together. And so um, when I was CEO of Yarra Plenty Regional Library, which is a small public library in, in Victoria, we created a wiki for people to add their stories to talk about how they lived in the northern suburbs of Melbourne at this particular time. And this sort of thing is really builds community and, and sharing information about um, the community. And the sixth, the last point is that the past inspires the future. And I really, um, this really hit me from the opening sentences in the background paper of this conference. And I thought this was a really powerful thing to say. The Middle East and North Africa countries are home to an extraordinary cultural and documentary heritage, both secular and religious, which of, is of critical importance to the entire world. A contribution to the history of humanity, this rich heritage represents an enormous capacity to inspire the development of the region's countries. So I think that's a really important point to, th to, to think of too. There seems to be international recognition uh, that there is a link between, between uh, cultural heritage and sustainable development. And we see that uh, not only in the, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, uh, which does have um, uh, 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 a sustainable development goal with targets focused on uh, protecting uh, uh, cultural and, and natural heritage. But we also see this in uh, international agreements preceding 
the 2030 agenda. For example, if you look at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, already uh, in that uh, document, we've got uh, cultural heritage uh, signposted as key uh, to lived experience. And lived experience is culture. Uh, we have uh, a provision that uh, guarantees that communities should indeed express themselves culturally uh, and the implications of that are hinted at even in the Universal Declaration uh, of Human Rights. But you also have uh, fast forwarding uh, other international documents that speak to the correlation uh, between cultural heritage and sustainable development, not least the UNESCO uh, 2001 uh, declaration on cultural diversity, which also celebrates uh, individual uh, participation in culture, uh, which gives vent to cultural expression as an important uh, pillar for citizenship. So the first point to make is precisely this, that there is international recognition of the connection between the two variables. But of course, uh, you, could, you could interrogate what these uh, documents speak of in terms of the theoretical understanding of culture and the heritage that it ultimately bequeaths to us. Uh, it was Julian Huxley, I think, who looked at culture uh, in terms of three variables, in terms of, in terms of menti facts, the things that we think about, in terms of soci facts, the relationships that we create between individuals, between communities, and so on and so forth, and the artifacts, the tools that we create. That is culture. And cultural heritage then, as far as I'm concerned, is development. If culture is something that is in a constant state of flux, then it simply means that it does at some point have an impact on, 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 on development, however we conceive it, whether it is economic uh, uh, or not. That brings me to the third point that I want to make uh, beyond one, recognizing the fact that there's a relationship between, uh, between uh, cultural heritage and sustainable development, two, uh, uh, referring to the documents that have been uh, sort of uh, uh, evolved over time uh, by, by the communities and nations, uh, but also the idea uh, that culture is constantly in, in flux. If you bring all these things uh, together, and look at the 2030 agenda. You, I, th I think it was it was Christian this, this morning who who said that sustainable development should go beyond the three pillars of, of sustainable development, namely uh, uh, environmental sustainability, uh, social sustainability, and economic sustainability. So these are the three pillars on which the 2030 agenda rests uh, at this point. Uh, but even when you argue that these are not enough. You can, in fact, be content that the three pillars, as they stand, do feature culture in different ways. And if you look at the, uh, the 2030 agenda, you will see some, some SDGs which actually point at this issue. You've got, you've got for example, uh, SDG 4, which is about education, and you've got their target uh, 4.7, which focuses on the provision of quality education and it goes on to argue that this education should embrace global citizenship should embrace uh, a cultural diversity should embrace democracy should embrace uh, civic participation, if you will. And that is important in as far as sustainable development is concerned. Because if you have uh, individuals and communities that are liberated to think, to act on their own, they are more likely to contribute towards sustainable development. They are more likely to own the process of development itself. So that goal is very important. But you could also look at uh, a goal uh, uh, 11, and in particular, uh, uh, a target 4, with its emphasis on protecting uh, cultural and natural heritage, again, that is linked uh, to the issues that we are talking about here. But also you could uh, fast forward and look at SDG uh, 16, particularly SDG uh, um, uh, 16 uh, with its target uh, 10, uh, and even break that down into the two indicators. One is providing guarantees for access to information, the other is protecting 
fundamental freedoms. If you link these two, you can see already that the international community was looking at the link between sustainable development and individual liberties, the extent to which liberated in individuals, as I have said, are likely to contribute towards uh, the process of, of development and even co-owning it, not only with other individuals and communities, but also with those that are in power. So it is important to look at this in this fashion because, as I conclude, in the end, if you look at the totality of SDG 16, you will notice that it goes much further uh, than the indicators that I have just highlighted. It, in fact, speaks about justice, access to justice. It speaks, it speaks about inclusivity. It speaks about peaceful societies. In other words, it is where peace and justice prevail that development is likely to occur. And cultural heritage does play an important role in enabling citizens to have a, a sense of settled justice, to have a sense of history from which they hail, and from that history to project into the future. So there is, as far as I'm concerned, an important connection between sustainable development and cultural heritage uh, viewed in terms of uh, how the world has seen this issue evolving, uh, viewed in terms of theory, and viewed in terms of the connections that are there within the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. On research, it's important for us, even in Qatar Foundation, because Qatar Foundation is a net, it's a, a kind of campus for education. It's called Education City. So we work also for better education. And uh, in this campus, we have Qatar National Library, we have universities, and you have a huge department of scientific research with whom we are working every day for uh, scientific research, for identification of pigments, uh, any kind of problem we have for conservation. So it's important also to, to work on that objective. And one of these objectives, number 13, is very important for the working for the climate. And I would just want to give you an example. For example, when we were in Athens last summer for the IFLA conference, um, we had a meeting like every year with a group preservation on conservation. The, the leader by the group, by the way, is in the room, Jean Dries, Dries. And uh, we decided to work together between the PAC centers and this group in the direction of uh, what can be done for sustainability for buildings, for libraries. We cannot have any more. I mean, not all countries can afford such a nice building with uh, just a very strong air conditioning. We have to work also for the future to find some constrictions could be more adapted for each case in each country. And uh, the, the climatic change is a, a very big problem. And we have to find now for storage new techniques which can be sustainable because we cannot always we have to consider also the, to the protection of the planet. So this uh, and this project, we, we started to work this summer with Gini Drives. Uh, also, we decided to include also the International Council of Archives. And then in September, I contacted the Secretary General of the ICA. And she said, yes, it's good. And she put me in contact with the people working for buildings. So it's not only a library issue. We start now to, to work with that topic together also with archives to see what could be done in the field of uh, sustainable buildings for storage of the archives and libraries. And I would like to finish with objective and goal number 16, as uh, Faxon said, for the peace. Uh, um, if, in this goal, it even mentions uh, the right and the objective to have everybody the right to save his rec personal records. And it's important. I would just like to remember you what happened in ex-Yugoslavia. Maybe for the first time when there was this war, maybe for the first time, instead of having military against military fighting, it was objective was to destroy the archives, which means your records, your land property, your family, all your proof of uh, citizenship, and uh, to destroy that kind of, having that as targets. And we have to work on that, and it's to show you that preservation in case of conflict, it's also preservation of uh, the proof of the citizenship, of the land owner. If you destroy your birth uh, registers and the land property, you don't have any more roots, and you, you don't know who you are anymore, and you don't have any proof of that, which is one of the duty of archival documents to, for in their duty to maintain and to help you to, for, for your citizenship. So all these tasks, and which are, I strongly encourage you to look at these goals, uh, are in your everyday objective, and we try at the level of the PAC Center to work in that direction. 
في البداية أتكلم عن دور الاتحاد العربي المكتبات المعلومات في الحفاظ على التراث الوثائقي موضوع التراث الوثائقي كان وما زال من ذا القدم هو موضوع يهم جميع الدول جميع الحضارات فما مثل ما يقال من ليس له ماضي ليس له مستقبل ولا حاضر جميع الدول العربية بدون استثناء اهتمت بالتراث الوثائقي والتنمية المستدامة فكان هذا معظم خططها المستقبلية وبما أن الاتحاد العربي للمكتبات والمعلومات هو جزء لا يتجزأ من هذه الدول وتأسس من قبل هذه الدول فكان له مبادرات سواء عن المستويات المكتبات الوطنية أو الجمعيات المهنية في مجال المكتبات والمعلومات والأرشيف وأيضا في مجال المهنيين والمتخصصين في مجال المعلومات فمن ضمن الأشياء اللي عملها الاتحاد العربي كتبت بعض البوينتس تعامل الاتحاد العربي للمكتبات والمعلومات مع الإفلاء تنظيم مؤتمر في سنة 2017 في تونس حول دور مؤسسات المكتبات العلمية البناءة التي تخدم الموضوع وتفتح الآفاق حوله فمن بين الموضوعات التي تمت مناقشتها النفاذ للمعلومات والتنمية المستدامة في تونس دور المؤسسات المكتبات والمعلومات المصرية في التنمية المستدامة دور المؤسسات المعلومات في حفظ التراث الوطني دراسة المكتبة الملك فهد الوطنية ومكتبة الكويت الوطنية أيضا وغيرها من المواضيع المهمة التي أسفرت عن نتائج وتوصيات من شأنها تحسين الواقع وتطوير في هذه الجوانب كذلك تخصيص الاتحاد محاوره لموضوع الأرشيف ومكتبات التراث في مؤتمره القادم بالمناسبة المؤتمر القادم بيكون عن الأرشيف بيكون في النصف الثاني من نوفمبر في دولة المغرب شيء آخر الاستمرار في التعاون مع المؤسسات الدولية المعنية بهذا الموضوع كالإفلاء واليونسكو سعي الاتحاد إلى إنشاء لجنة خاصة بالمؤسسات والمكتبات المهن المهتمة بالوثائق والتراث والأرشيف نظرا لأهمية هذه الجوانب وضرورة تشجيع الاهتمام والحفاظ عليها سعي الاتحاد إلى تشجيع التعاون بين الجمعيات والمكتبات العربية في هذا الجانب لإبراز أهميته عن طريق إقامة الورش والندوات والملتقيات والمؤتمرات وبرامج التوعية والتثقيف حول الموضوع وتعريب معايير التنمية المستدامة بالمناسبة معايير التنمية المستدامة التي أقرتها الأمم المتحدة هي عبارة عن 17 أو 17 جولز أو 17 هدف تحتوي على 169 غاية الاتحاد العربي قام بتعريب هذه الأهداف ال17 عشر ومن ضمنها الاهتمام بالصحة والصحة للجميع التعليم أيضا والرفاه والصحة اقتراح الاتحاد لفكرة عمل جائزة خاصة وطبعا هذه الفكرة جديدة ولم ترى النور وإن شاء الله مستقبلا راح نعمل جائزة خاصة لها الأمر الجيد هو انعكاس هذا الاهتمام من ضمن الاتحاد على الدول الأعضاء في الاتحاد العربي للمكتبات والمعلومات فكانت هناك مبادرات من بعض الدول العربية والخليجية في هذا المجال فمن ضمن المبادرات أيضا إنشاء مجمع الملك عبد العزيز للمكتبات الوقفية في المدينة المنورة الذي يعد نموذجا جيدا لحفظ التراث وفق منظور وطني شيوع برامج معالجة التراث الوثائقي وحفظه واستعادة المخطوطات المهاجرة كالندوة العلمية التي أقامها مركز ذاكرة عمان بسلطنة عمان في 2019 التي كانت بعنوان المخطوطات العمانية المهاجرة تفعيل التقنية والرقمنة كالمكتبة الرقمية العربية الموحدة وهي من أبرز المشاريع الثقافية السعودية والعربية إذ يعمل المشروع على تجميع المحتوى الرقمي العربي من المكتبات السعودية أولا ومن ثم العربية والعالمية وتحتها طبيعة الحال هذا ليس مشروع سعودي فقط وإنما مشروع عربي إقليمي تشجيع البحث العلمي في هذا المجال كالمؤتمر الدولي الذي يقيمه مركز ذاكرة عمان الذي يصدرها أيضا المجلة العلمية التي يصدرها المركز وما تحتويه المقالات العلمية تخدم هذا الموضوع إنشاء المتاحف التي تتيح هذا التراث للجمهور وتوعيته حوله أيضا لا ننسى مكتبة قطر الوطنية واهتمامها بهذا الموضوع وما هذا المؤتمر والتجمع الكبير والتعاون بينها وبين اليونسكو إلا من اهتمامها في مثل هذه المواضيع أما بالنسبة للشيء الآخر هو حرية الوصول إلى المعلومات الاتحاد العربي للمكتبات والمعلومات يشيد بهذه الأشياء ومنذ عهده ومنذ تأسس دائما عندنا مقولة في مجال المكتبات المعلومة للجميع أيضا هذا عمل للاتحاد العالمي الإفلاء ومن ضمن الأشياء استفدنا من جمعية المكتبات الأمريكية التي أقرت في منهجها عام 1939 هذه الأشياء أيضا لو تكلمنا عن نماذج بعض الدول العالمية مثلا أنا اليوم قرأت معلومة واستغربت منها الصباح أن في السويد أقرت هذا الموضوع من 1766 وهو يحق لكل مواطن سويدي الحصول على المعلومة والوثائق الرسمية فنتمنى من هذه الأشياء أن تكون في وطننا العربي ولو بصورة مبسطة وبالفعل تم إقرار هذا هذا القانون في المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية من سنة تقريبا 2003 
لكن للاسف الشديد القانون تم اقراره لكن الاعلاميين والصحفيين ولا يعلموا شيء عن هذا القانون الدوله الثانيه التي اقرت هذا الشيء دوله اليمن في سنه 2012 من الدول العربيه هذا ملخص بسيط لدور الاتحاد العربي وتشجيعه على الحفظ التراث الوثائقي وحريه وصول المعلومات <تصفيق>